when you're on the podcast and you're on the stage and you're visible and you're speaking, there's, I mean, there's lots of, of tips that I have, but I want to start with really understanding who your target audience is, who do you want to be, you know, resonating with and sharing stories that resonate with your ideal clients and your target audience, because stories are what entertain people. They are what creates that emotional connection and podcast by nature is edutainment. It's education. Yeah. You're providing information and you're there to entertain. If people are not feeling compelled and entertained by what you're saying, they're not going to listen. Welcome to today's episode of Influence by Design. I'm your host, Samantha Riley, and very much looking forward to chatting with today's guest, Jessica Rhodes, and we're going to talk about all things podcasting. So first up, welcome to the show, Jessica. It's great to have you here. I am so happy to be here. Thank you so much. Now, you've been in the podcasting space for quite a while. I would love for you to share what got you into this space, because I am an avid podcaster, but at the same time, it also took me a little while to get into it because I was one of those people that was a little bit nervous to put myself out there. I used to hate the sound of my voice, blah, blah, blah. But once you're in the world of podcasting, it's very, it's very addictive. But I'd love to know what your story was, how you got into podcasting. Yeah, I think we've been both been around for quite quite a while because I think you were just mentioning to me that you've been podcasting since we were using Skype and I yes. also, I also relate to that <laughs> but, when I first oh no, started podcasting so yeah. <laughs> it's funny because it doesn't feel like it's been that long but then when I think about when I first started the business and when I first started podcasting the technology was very different the practices are very different so it has evolved um quite a bit. I so I got into the whole podcast world by way of my dad. So I before I started Interview Connections, I was working for a nonprofit organization running a door-to-door -door field campus. So like literally in a totally separate world environment industry. And when I became pregnant with my first child, I wanted to be home with him. So my dad, who is a business coach and has had an online business for 20 years or so, said, you can be a virtual assistant and I'll be your first client. And so that is how I first got into the world of working online. And my dad had started his podcast in 2012 recording on, actually, my dad was recording his podcast on instant teleseminar, if you remember. Oh, yes, that. I do. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> So the sound quality was not very good, but he was all about the content and the networking with guests, which I know we're going to talk about today. Um, so I got started by booking my dad as a guest on other people's podcasts and then inviting, oftentimes we would invite the host to be a guest on his podcast. So there was a lot of, you know, pod swaps, as a lot of people like to call them, cross promotion, collaboration. And when I was pitching him as a guest and making those connections, the host had never been pitched before, which is unheard of now. You have a podcast, you're mm -hmm. getting pitched mm -hmm. multiple times per day. But when I was pitching, I kid you not, it was like the wild, wild west. People were like, who are you? <laughs> I've <laughs> never been pitched before. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm just um, booking my dad on podcasts. And so that's kind of what sparked this idea. The curiosity and the interest in getting support with podcast booking was what led me to start Interview Connections, um, which was the world's first ever booking agency for entrepreneurs and podcasters. I love that. That's so good. People that see a gap and find a solution is what entrepreneurship is all about. And that's that story is just the epitome of what we do as entrepreneurs. Now, I'd love to start off Actually, let me let me phrase this a bit different. I've got a system that I call front of stage and backstage. And this is from my my days as a dance studio owner. There's the, you know, what's happening on the stage, that everything that the audience can see. And then for that to happen, there's a whole heap of stuff that's happening behind the scenes in the backstage area that the audience never, never sees. And I 
feel that podcasting is exactly, exactly the same. And as guests, most people do it because they want the reach to the audience. They want to be in that front stage position where they're being interviewed to grow their audience what can you speak to in regards to some tips on the front stage side? Because there are, I as a host see a lot of gaps from people where they don't have um, a way to link their interview to stay connected, to generate leads, to get people on their email list, all of those sorts of things. I'm sure you've seen a lot of different ways to do this. Oh yeah. And this is, I love talking about this because that, I love that metaphor, the front stage and and the back of the stage, because that's what makes podcasting and podcast guesting such an amazing marketing strategy is it's not just one thing that you get out of it. There's not just one benefit. There's a multitude of benefits. And when you're on the podcast and you're on the stage and you're visible and you're speaking, there's, I mean, there's lots of of tips that I have, but I want to start with really understanding who your target audience is, who do you want to be, you know, resonating with and sharing stories that resonate with your ideal clients and your target audience, because stories are what entertain people. They are what creates that emotional connection and podcast by nature is edutainment. It's education. You're providing information and you're there to entertain. If people are not feeling compelled and entertained by what you're saying, they're not going to listen. So you have to have that balance of education, really valuable information that they can take action on. And also your personality, your energy, the stories that have people actually want to listen to this on their free time. Totally. What about the where we lead people to? Because this is such a forgotten strategy by so many people it's great to show up it's great to be the the guest it's great to share those stories the edutainment I love that by the way but if we show up and give an interview and then walk away it's almost like at the end of the show it's just like lights off curtain down and and the show's over but there's got to be you know to for us to get the greatest benefit there's got to be some sort of next step, next offer, what happens next? Absolutely. And this is where a lot of podcast guests kind of miss the mark is they have no place to send people to. So the first thing is knowing what your goals are and what you want to get out of podcast guesting, because that's like, you know, your target audience, you're sharing stories and information and actionable advice that's relevant to that audience. And then where do they need to go next? What action can they take? And that will depend on what your goals are and what results you want to see. So if somebody has a podcast, like they're being a guest on other podcasts, but they also have their own show, then oftentimes I'll advise them to, you know, plant a seed in the episode that, oh, I have actually an episode of my podcast all about this. And so that way people are listening and then they're also opening up their podcast app to hit, you know, download on one of your episodes. So that's a way to grow your audience. And then also at the end of the podcast, when the host kind of gives you that opportunity to share where their audience can find you, give one clear call to action to send the listeners so they can connect with you. And this is so important to keep it one thing, one clear call to action, because when you give five different places where people can find you like Instagram and LinkedIn and Facebook and website, people don't know where to go. You know, a confused mind says no. So having that one clear place and, you know, if I could pull back, this is a very, it's a meta conversation because we are talking about podcast guesting and we're doing a podcast interview, you know, right before our interview started, you, you kind of asked me, where do you want to send people to? Do you have a free offer or something? And just knowing that, the, you know, when the episode's going live, it's coming up, I have a free masterclass. I said, oh, that would actually be perfect because if I don't know when the episode is going live, I'll send people to my website where they can book a call and learn more. But if I know it's going to go live right before an event, then, you know, I'll share that. So you want to be strategic and just talk with the host, you know, talk with them about, you know, when is the show going to go live? If you have a few different lead magnets, you could ask the host, I have several gifts. Which one do you think your audience would find the most value in? Because they want their audience to get value from the podcast. So 
I always recommend talking with the host about what they think would be the best free offer if you have a few different in mind. Mm. That's a really great tip about asking when is the interview going live because some hosts might be three to six months out. Um, the other thing when you're, or I'd like to add to that is it's amazing how many times I've been interviewed on podcasts where the conversation's gone somewhere that I haven't really expected it to go, but I'm quite happy for it to go wherever. And I'll give you an example. I was booked on a show and this was, I think, back in 2015. And I was specifically asked to come and speak about Instagram. But the very first question, he asked a question about entrepreneurship and the fact that I'd always been, you know, been in entrepreneurship for uh, 30 years. And it took a very different route. And we ended up talking about fear and, and all sorts of things. So at the end of the interview, of course, I didn't say, oh, and by the way, I've got this free resource about Instagram because we hadn't even talked about Instagram. In my mind, I was like, what resource can I provide that relates directly to this conversation? So knowing when it is, but also being really mindful about what the topic is and making sure that you match up those resources um, is I think key. Yeah, I totally agree. It, it, yeah, you want the call to action, the lead magnet, the free offer to be relevant to what they just listened to, because the whole goal is that if they liked your episode and they got value from it, they want more. What more can you give them that is going to help them go deeper with the topic that you talked about? Mm. From your perspective, because you're dealing with podcast hosts and podcast guests every day, is there certain offers that you feel are better in um, the podcast medium than others? So it actually just, it really depends on what your business is, what you're selling. Is it high ticket, low ticket, and who your audience is? Um, so the one thing I will say in regards to it being the podcast medium is that when somebody hears you as a guest on a podcast and they listen to you for 30 to 45 minutes, they are much warmer than a lead who heard you for 30 seconds. So from that regard, you can likely send them to a place in your funnel that's further down the funnel than something that you would send to a really cold lead. So for example, you might not invite someone to a discovery call or a strategy call with you if they just sent you a DM on Instagram for the first time. You might need to nurture them and warm them up a little bit. But what we find a lot of the times with podcast guesting, when somebody hears you on a podcast, they're ready to go right to a call because they're like, I just heard your whole story. I got a ton of value. You were interviewed by a host I trust. They go right to a call. So for business owners that are selling coaching, consulting services, it's a high ticket, multi-thousand dollar investment. Oftentimes going inviting them right to your website to book a call works really, really well. Um, but if you're selling, you know, low ticket or courses, or you have a really long sales cycle, it's not likely that someone's going to be ready to get on a call and maybe make a buying decision right away, a way for them to get on your email list. So you can continue to nurture that relationship is ideal. hundred mm, percent. Love that. Now, that's a topic that a lot of people talk about, but something that I was excited to see um, come through when you and I decided to chat was that you are very aware of the networking that happens behind the podcast because this is something that I talk about all the time and I've not heard many people talk about this so I was very excited you you specifically said to me more networking than broadcasting what do you mean by that yeah. So when you are getting interviewed on podcast, the most important person that you are talking to is the host of the show. And this is overlooked by so many podcast guests because people get into podcast guesting because they want visibility. They want people to know about them and their business. And they just kind of see the host as the person that's going to get them visibility. The host is who you're gaining visibility to first and foremost. And so this is especially important for entrepreneurs who are selling high ticket coaches, consultants, agency owners, service-based business owners, you need your prospective clients to trust you and to know you and to get to ask you questions in a very low pressure, 
scenario. And that is the host. The host is the person who's actually talking with you. So I always recommend that you really focus on your relationship with the host, build rapport with them, provide value to them, make them look good, do all of that because they will promote your episode more if you give a great interview. Um, And you just never know where that relationship can go. We just have seen so many times where the host invites the guest to be a speaker at an in-person event or the host refers you to another host. One of our clients said, I always ask every host, do you know any other podcasters that would want to have me on their show? Like, it's just, a, it's something that they always ask. They're able to triple the number of interviews that they're getting because they're just in a habit of always asking. Um, So that host has so much access for you. And there's so many collaboration opportunities, you know, Business is built on relationships. It's built on people actually knowing you and trusting you and understanding who you are and what you do. So make the most of your relationship with that host because they are the most important person in this strategy. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy that I finally found someone else that really understands this because one of the questions I get asked is how do you get booked on so many summits? as a speaker, it's always through podcasting. And even if it wasn't on that particular person's show, it's always been an introduction through a podcast host because people that host podcasts generally use other strategies that are similar, run summits, have, you know, have on uh, uh, in-person events, anything that's like that, because that's generally the more extroverted person or the person that, uh, that understands uh, building audience. And I ran a profitable coach summit just recently. We had 30 speakers. And I think from memory, there was only one of those speakers that hadn't been on my show. We'd connected through the podcasting and they're people that we've gone on and done multiple collaborations with. Because also, again, a podcast host is used to promotion. We're used to production all of the things behind the scenes. So it's definitely worth really nurturing that relationship with the host. Is there any other um, tips that you can give for people that may be podcast guesting already, um, apart from asking, you know, is there any other podcast hosts that I should know? Are there any other tips that you have that maybe you give your clients about really nurturing those relationships or how to take those relationships deeper? Absolutely. So it starts the moment you get booked on the show, you know, the moment you get secured for that opportunity, start building the relationship. So connect with them on social media, follow them, connect with them on LinkedIn, um, do a post. I'm going to give a bunch of just actionable pieces of advice that you can, you know, take any or all of them. Um, But number one, connect with the host on social media, because first you might connect via email to kind of just officially schedule. You might be talking with their, you know, assistant or their team or whatnot, get connected with the actual host, start building some rapport and just conversation via direct message post that you're actually going to be interviewed on the show. So you can say, I just secured an, you know, I just got booked for this podcast. I'm so excited. You can listen to their show here. I'll post my interview when it goes live. So just start building some excitement there. Um, You can actually do a cross collaboration. So you could do a joint Instagram live or Facebook live. If you have a podcast, you can invite them onto your platform. So find a way that you can play together and not just be on their show, but what can you do to deepen that relationship the I call it the green room chat. I like how you call it backstage. Oh, Similar, I call yes. it the green room chat. So when you're talking to the host before the interview actually starts being recorded, that is the green room. So there's many different questions that you can ask the host. And so one, I interviewed my client about this because I, I learned the most from my clients. I, I give advice and everything, and then they come back. And I'm like, oh, that's genius. I'm going to keep, I'm going to tell other people to do that. My client, Isaac Ho, he's a sales coach. He always asks the host, why did you start your podcast? What comes out of that conversation is incredible. He learns all types of things. What motivated them to start their podcast? And everyone has a different motivation, whether they, you know, they wanted to do something that was fun in their business. They wanted to connect. They wanted to hone their message. 
And just what comes out of that conversation has led to them saying, you know, I could actually really use your coaching. And so it's not done in like in a manipulative way, but he just genuinely knows that if I get to know this host at a deeper level, if I understand what makes them tick, what their motivations are, we'll have a better connection that will lead to a better interview. And then of course, when you have deep connections with people they're you're more likely to work with them and vice versa. Um, and then after the interview, of course, promote it. Um, you know, I, I was just, I just did a case study post about this because I closed a sale from podcast guesting, which was very fun to experience the results of what I teach. But I had a client sign up who heard me as a guest on a podcast and, you know, after that interview went live, I promoted it. I messaged the host. I'm like, I'm, it was a great episode. I said, I'm going to email my list about it. And just promote it, stay in touch with the host, let them know that you're promoting it. How are you using it? So I think I gave like 10 things there, but yeah, just stay really and engaged and promote it. What I love about that, it's, it is a, it's a relationship. It's a two-way street. And remembering that, you know, from the host perspective, we, even when a pitch comes through, we're researching. Do we want that person on the show? So we've already got an idea. Then we're saying yes. Then we're getting them booked. Then we're doing the interview. Then we're going to production. Then, you know, then we're promoting it to our list and our social media. And understanding that there's all of that work happening on the host side and supporting that host does not go unnoticed. And I'll give you a story of the opposite of this that happened to me fairly recently. I had someone on the show and all of that happened. You know, I'd actually researched him quite a bit um, because his story was quite interesting. Anyway, we did an episode, it went live, we did all of the promotion and he sent me a an email with a video in it that didn't even say, hi, Sam. So I could tell it was a video that he sends to everyone and it, and it said, you know, I love to be on your show and if you give me a testimonial saying how amazing I was at a guest, I'll promote our episode. And I was like, are you kidding me? And I thought, oh, maybe, maybe I'm just being a bit hormonal today. I'll just let that go. Then I got a follow up and I was like, okay, Sam, now, now you can go. And I just sent back exactly that. Like I've done all of this work and it really feels, it really feels wrong. And that person, I could have potentially gone on and done collaborations with, I could have potentially, you know, podcasters, no podcasters, right? I could have introduced him to other hosts. None of that will be happening now. And also like just, it's absolutely killed the relationship right in the water and the relationship piece. Business is all about relationships. You know that you learned that through your dad, right from the beginning. And if you nurture those relationships and if you missed all of those tips that Jessica gave, go back and listen to them because there was a lot there. Like you said, there was about 10 and I highly recommend every single one of them. Yeah, that that guest clearly missed the mark because <laughs> in a lot of people, they, they try to use this whole workflow. Okay, this is going to be my strategy. I'm going to make this video. I'm going to send it to every guest. And what they totally lose in that is human connection and just talking mm. to people like real people. I mean, when my team books me on a podcast, I'm right away like, oh my God, I'm so excited because I am. I don't just script that out. Like I just talk to people and that the most effective marketing communications on a mass level, like email broadcasts and SMS messaging, it's when I write like I'm just talking to one person. And mm. so that gets lost when someone's like, oh, this is going to be my strategy for podcast guesting. I'm going to say this to every host. Okay, but you're forgetting that every host is a human and and a mm -hmm. real person that's not like the other host. They're a real person. Like just talk to people like you are talking to them in person. Yeah. One of the tips I give my clients, because we can lose so much in like DMs or emails, is before you hit send on anything, say it out loud and imagine that person standing in front of you. And if it feels spammy saying it out loud, then it's going to come across spammy in text. Exactly. Exactly. This is a good time. Also, if you are, are talking to people in DM, um, pepper in a voice message. You don't have to do everything as a voice message because some people love them. Some people hate them. But every yeah. so often I like to send a voice message so they know it's actually me. <laughs> so, so I think good. that's a good tip as well. So good. Now, I know that you mentioned earlier that you have a live masterclass coming up. I'd love you to share a little bit about you know, what you're going to be talking about or teaching and who it's for. 
Yeah. Thank you so much. So I host a free three-part masterclass. Um, it's called the Podcast Guesting Masterclass. And it's for coaches, consultants. I've mentioned a couple of times. It's for online entrepreneurs, coaches, consultants, agency owners, service-based entrepreneurs who want visibility to new audiences through podcast guesting. And I teach in three different sessions. I go over the foundations of podcast guesting, how to craft your podcast one sheet. I go over the strategies for monetizing, you know, networking with the host, increasing visibility to new audiences, use a call to action. Um, we have a panel of speakers that come on and share how they're using podcast guesting. So it's coming up May 13th through the 15th. There are recordings available for one week. So if you're in Australia and you can't make it to our 1 PM Eastern time sessions, you can register and then I'll send you the replay and you can register at interviewconnections.com slash live masterclass. Perfect. And we'll put the links below as always so that if you're on the treadmill right now that uh, you can go and just click that link. But Jessica, just to wrap this up, because there, we've talked about so many different strategies in such a short amount of time, what is one thing that you want to leave listeners with about the topic of podcast guesting that's just going to wrap this episode up in a beautiful present, a beautiful gift? Yeah. So podcast guesting is a long-term strategy with many different angles and variables. And I actually just did a post on this um, right before this, but if it's not working for you yet, you haven't seen the clients reach out, don't blame the strategy. Look at what you can change. Look at your message. What are the topics on your one sheet? What are the Who are the show hosts that you're reaching out to? What is your call to action? Listen back. There's so many variables that will affect the results that you get from podcast guesting and any other marketing strategy for that matter. So constant, like stay committed to it long-term, assess, reassess, commit to something that's working, pivot when it's not, but don't just throw the whole strategy out because it didn't work in a month. Stay committed to it because it's relationships and relationships mm. are never going out of style. So <laughs> Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. Love that so much. Jessica, thanks for coming on the show today and sharing all of your information about podcast guesting. This is a topic that I absolutely love. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me.